Hello everyone, this is CJ Novo992 and today we're back for another brand new video and as you can tell by the Nash, in fact you can just tell now by the fact that we are here to talk about a team managed by the one, the only Giovanni Van Bronckhorst so that we are of course here to talk about yet another Rangers win as Giovanni makes it 4 out of 4 right out the gate and becomes the first manager since 1970 to do that fact and come away with his first four wins out of his first four games. You talk about crisis mode and everything gone wrong and everyone mocking us, laughing at us, saying the banter years are back. Well, if this is the banter years, people, I am going to enjoy every second of it. Because it's got to be said now, ladies and gentlemen, we are seeing a distinctly different Rangers side. The more games we play, the more Giovanni is able to tweak and change the Rangers team. And I think I can say something I think we'll all agree with right now is the changes are exactly what we've been needing, exactly what we've been craving, and the results are there to be seen. And just the way we're going about our business, and I'm thinking back through and I'm looking at the whole Gerard situation and everything. I think Gerard, we talked about the evolution of Gerard. Remember we said all that and we talked about what he was able to walk into the job with, the players he had, and the, the good players, the hard-working players, the Candaces, etc. They'd done their role, they got us to a certain level, but we then had to take another step up, take another step in that ladder to keep on improving and keep on striving forward. Well, I think not only have we done it over the last couple of years in terms of players, well, I think recently with that heartbreaking news that we got when Steven Gerrard did leave, I think we've now took that in terms of manager perspective as well, because this Rangers team is different. If you're just looking online, you're barely paying attention to seeing it's maybe a 4-3-3 or in fact you're not doing the changes justice and for me, this Rangers team is a completely different animal in every single aspect. Gio and the new management staff has provided everything that we needed and craved for all season long. When we saw us get stale and just hang about just about here waiting for other people to catch us, we've now been woke up again. Gio has got this rampant Rangers team looking and playing like champions and we saw that the day with the very, very dominating performance over Dundee, who some people might jump in and try to be negative, say, oh, it's just Dundee this, Dundee that. Well, think to the last time we played Dundee, how pedestrian we were, how slow and passive, and how easily they figured us out, sitting back enough, waiting for us to pass to side, to side, to side around the halfway line, try the occasional long ball into the channel, have people dropping deep like Alfredo Morelos, nay space, nay penetration, everything in front of them. They had that so tweaked and worked do it, that they absolutely dominated us in the early game this season and it took a fantastic performance from John McLaughlin including a penalty save to get us away from that game stealing the three points well think of everything that went in that game and even how badly we defended their one long ball out to the channel remember we didn't adjust during the game we just kept going and we kept giving them the space well Gio using his full backs his actual defenders as well took that long ball away from Dundee and left them with absolutely nothing which has got us the ball back quicker, allowed us to attack more quickly, and it made it to be an absolute bonafide pumping the night troops. So I have got nothing but good thoughts and good things to say in this individual performance and I think we'll go ahead and we'll transition and speak about the game of football then shall we because everything we're talking about in terms of the positivity and that you could see it from the start in 11 because Stephen Davis, we all love Mr Stephen Davis here but when we saw Arfield come in we knew exactly what was happening. Not only would we have the attacking runs and another body going forward but we would see Glenn Kamara be put in his Glenn Kamara role, that one man midfield. Again this is Rangers Football Club, the talent we have especially at him. We didn't need two ball carriers and two guys recycling possession all the time and being rigid that way. No, we can do it with one and we've got somebody who does it absolutely sensationally in Glenn Kamara just dropping that anchor and getting us going forward with more people going forward. The only surprise was with the start of the game is it took us so long to actually put the ball in the back of the net. Because once again, under Giovanni, it wasn't a matter of if Rangers would score the first goal in this game. It was only a matter of when, because we were penetrating, we were attacking, we were pinging it, we were really going after them. And again, Joe Rebo is heavily involved in nearly every little thing I'm going to talk about. I'm sorry if you're getting bored of hearing me singing the praises of Joe Rebo, but I don't know what I'm supposed to do in terms of talking about Rangers games without mentioning that guy's name 992 times in a video, because he's absolutely absolutely shining troops, he's involved in everything, defensively he was getting involved, I mean he done his splits at one point, right, mid move, right, the ball went left and he just went, I'll just do the splits, I've not seen that type of technique in the old splatonas since John claude Van Damme and kickboxer during the training montage, he's just different and really, we talk about feet or bicks, that 
just summarises everything because he combines beautifully with uh, Fashion Sakala who was starting the game of football and you know what you get with Sakala all go all energy and positive freaking vibes and well I say positive vibes and that's what you get for Sakala but if your name's Kerr what you got was a Sarah Arse the day because Sakala went to town on the laddie I mean in the first 10 minutes he, he fakes to go inside and then he cuts outside and unleashes one probably should they better there but we'll let the laddie off with it because again he's created his own opportunity then had a short drag just a little bit wide just a couple minutes after that and you could already tell Dundee were terrified his trickery but also his directness no waiting on anybody or anything like that. if you got the ball he was gone for it. That's exactly what happened in the 23rd minute. More dominating pressure from Rangers. Scotty Arfield does very well to win a header against Fontaine, I believe. He actually says he knocks it down to Sakala, who again is bright. And this time he fakes to go outside. Kerr buys that as well. He then cuts inside and unleashes an effort here, troops. I do not understand how this goalkeeper's managed to save this because this might have been on his weak foot, but it's ripped to perfection by Sakala. But again, full credit to the Dundee goalkeeper. What a performance for him today. But I guess it's been about 40 seconds since I said the name of Joe Rebo. So let's get to the 35th minute of the game then, shall we? And speak about the opening goal of this game. And... It's all Joe Rebo. Tavernier actually does very well because he originally knocks in a ball that's well defended by Dundee, but then instinctively, as he's getting chased down, he just headers it, he just cushions it right down to Joe Rebo, and he gets probably <laughs> his least deserving assist of the season. That's right, the skipper gets an assist for that wee cushion header, people, because what Joe Rebo does, he picks the ball up on the flank, again, stretching people out. We're not just crowded in the middle and relying on fullbacks. We're actually stretching teams open, and then he cuts inside, he beats one. Cuts again, beats two, and then he just rips it, people, with a left fit. Now, is it an absolute pan braid postage stamp, tickle my pickle shot? No, it's no, people. But again, it's a shot and it's asking a question. And when you've got that many people in your box parking the bus in front of your goalkeeper, this is what happens when you do have a shot. You make your own luck. And Fontaine, I believe it is, again, tries to get an end of it and flick it, but he knocks it beyond his goalkeeper. But it's still a Joe Rebel goal, and it's all down to Joe Rebo actually taking the shot. And I, we were playing champagne football and we finally got a wee downer at people and that leads us to the 42nd minute again where we're carving open. We're playing such beautiful stuff here. Scott Arfield, I love the guy. Just so, I know he didn't score but let's salute the man right now because he finds Hadji and Hadji has such a delicate through ball here. It finds Alfredo Morelos. He's 1v1 with the goalkeeper. He should score but he rifles it right at the keeper who again made himself very, very big and done his job from that perspective. But if we had scored that goal in that game, that'd probably been the goal of the game in terms of the movement, the first touch passing, and the just the vision of our boy Hadji. Then right off the bat, pretty much from the whistle gone, we were in their faces again. We were trying to win it. And this is a bit of an extended highlight, so I'm going to skip a little bit. But anyway, we're, we're tickling, we're teasing, we're passing it all about the box. Morelos has a shot here, Sakala has a shot here. Block, block, good defending, good defending. It, it gets knocked out, but it comes straight back in, it falls to Scotty Arfield who unleashes a kind of half volley but is once again very well saved by the goalkeeper who does enough to knock it on the post and I was thinking to myself let's get the prime Neuer to actually turn up and play for Dundee, that's nice him it is needed, it must be a part of his charity work. But just as you're starting to get annoyed people, the 55th minute, the beautiful number itself went ahead and delivered another good memory and what I loved about this is it actually came from the right hand side for Tavernier doing very very good defending and nips the ball to Scotty Arfield, Arfield hits a nice little first time pass to Morelos who hits a first time pass to Tavernier it comes back to Morelos, Morelos hits a switchy play right away again that's the difference in this Rangers team, the width that we've actually got we are playing and it goes out to the left hand side, Aribo's making a run that he would never ever make under the previous regime down the left hand side of the channel, it would have been inwards and channeling in and blah blah blah, but it makes it down the left hand side, he whips in a ball and I it's an own goal and everything like that in terms of Sweeney again, but it's all down to just the brilliance and the attacking play of Rangers, that ball is nearly undefendable, the only guy that we've ever seen defend a ball like that was Conor Goldson at Easter Road but again even though Sweeney had a very good game this afternoon I thought there is levels to this Goldson can do it Big Sweeney, can he? But again, taking a break in terms of the positive action for Rangers. Lee Griffiths came on the part there and shout out to James McPake for subbing him on because he provided everyone with some late half-time entertainment because not only was he utter 
gash with the football at his feet, but he just got embarrassed every single time he got near a Rangers player. I mean, Glenn Kamara created a skill move just to rip the pure piss I'm like, he took the ball off him, wait for him to come and get it, flip flapped, and then he done something with the ball that I stole. Didn't even understand, and Griffiths was going like that. Honestly, people, his head was spinning that much. He must have thought he played for Wolves by the 65th minute of this game, but as he did, just get embarrassed, he started kicking out and pulling people from behind. He picks up a clear and obvious yellow card, and then just a couple minutes later, around about the 60th minute of this game, he comes in from behind and just wipes out Calvin Bassey and the referee absolutely lays a brick by not giving him the second yellow card. Everyone's want to talk about yellow cards whenever it's a favour a decision in favour of Rangers, even though the referees are given the correct decision by giving penalty kicks. But they didn't want to talk about clear offsides. They didn't want to talk about phone holding your face, cheating or anything like that. They didn't want to talk about these type say incidences but I want to people the referee bricked it in there Lee Griffiths should have got his second yellow card just a couple minutes into this game but right, the referee filling his nappy to one side we go just about five more minutes into that game and again his impact never brought in even bringing Jason Cummins on didn't really offer anything to the game they were still trying to hit that long ball but we now ask your defenders especially the fullbacks to actually defend first rather than attack first and you could see it was night and day the difference my boy Barisic having another fantastic defensive display. Now I talked him up the other day in the video and I talked him up on Twitter talking about his interceptions, his block and people ripped me an absolute new one. Honestly I look like Kerr versus Sakala online but for me, I'm just telling you how I see it. Barisic has been sensational defensively since Gio has came in. But I, we were teased with Scotty Wright coming on after he had a fantastic run, but again, he just didn't have that final product. But we do get the third goal, and the way we get the third goal is absolutely hilarious. It's bang on the 70th minute. Scotty Arfield gets the ball. He actually tries to find Alfredo Morelos, but it's a little bit behind him. Now there is three. That's right, I said three. Un, du, toi, people. You're welcome for the little bit of French. And I still don't understand how he actually gets this because it kind of ricochets in between one of the defender's feet and then falls to the other one. But Alfredo Morelos just seems to part them like he's Moses, parting like the Red Sea. And then they're all just round him, pulling his jersey, trying to grab him, trying to kick into him to get the football in that way. But he seems to put them all on his back and carry them. He gives every single one of them a backy, people, and then goes through on goal and finishes like his name's Jermaine Defoe with such a cultured, composed finish. It's so confusing, but again, in itself, it's the most Morelos goal you ever see just carnage absolute everywhere but pure strength and the wee man finishes it with one of these a couple of minutes after jack's arrival i'm not trying to say these are <laughs> related at all as he had no impact on this at all but Alfredo Morelos does get one cleared off the line where once again Dundee does some good defending and I think a lot of people will maybe look at this game maybe you missed it or anything maybe you're a rival fan trying to say oh it's just Dundee at home they wouldn't have tried no Dundee threw their heart and soul at this game defensively brilliant performances for Big Sweeney putting himself blocks and everything and the goalie saved five or six goals putting one of these performances that just frustrates the absolute life as we wonder save after wonder save they did their part to stop this if it be in a double digit scoreline but again there is still that one wee mad moment or two or anything like that because McGregor actually had to make a save before we ended up getting one cleared off the line by the way in fact I think it was still 2-0 at this point so sorry about my breakdown after McGregor tries a wee bit of slack throw he tries to find Glenn Kamara it's behind him Dundee pouncing it very well they actually end up going down the right hand side and forcing a very good save out of McGregor that was just before the third goal in the game and then in the 88th minute just a moment of madness it's a set piece for Dundee they have about three deflections in this one, Cummins' his shot ends up hitting off Connor Golton, it hits the post, it hits Shagaru right in there, and then it painfully, but thankfully, crawls, and I thought it was going in, but it crawls just wide, but again, it shows it's still a work in progress, we're not there yet defensively, but the improvements are there to be seen, and that's all Dundee had to offer, and again, compare that to the last time we played them with chance after chance after chance after chance. And I, with that being said, that's us all done and dusted, people, and as you can see, there is a smile on this face. I'm so encouraged, I'm so positive about what I'm seeing now on the park, and that feels like a weight off the old shoulder blades in that as well, people. So, you've heard Massey, if you're talking about individual performances, who was man of the matches, I thought Glenn Kamara was excellent again in the Glenn Kamara role, and for me, he backs up that we didn't need him and Davis sitting there together. That's every time I've seen Kamara play in that role, he's just been 
unbelievable. So he's up there. Uh, Fashion Sakala was excellent. Yes, he didn't score this afternoon, but I thought Barisic was great as well. Tavernier was ex excellent defensive. I thought the two centre-backs were good. But for me, the man of the match has to be Mr. Fita Bix himself, Joe Rebo. Everything positive for Rangers came so I know that you've had to sit and listen to me prattle on and sing praise of this Rangers team. Now it's time for you, the nation, to get involved. So let me know your thoughts and opinions down there in the old comment section below. And who was your man of the match? Whilst you hopefully go ahead and dive into the comments and share your opinions, we'll jump over to Twitter. So over to Twitter they go then and I ask them the exact same question as I asked you. Who was your man of the match and what's your opinion on the game? And the first one actually comes in from Four Lads Had a Dream. Shout out to Stevie. Thank you for supporting the channel, big man. He writes, comfortable and possession-based. It's more patient and balanced. Players responding well as disciplined and clean sheets are welcomed. Should have had more Aribo man of the match and suiting his floating role, he seems to have a very good day at the office. And shout out to you as well, my man. I know you're a bit under the weather right now, giving me you and Davies' conversation last couple of days. So hopefully you feel better soon, big man. Um, the next one comes in from Rampant. Ryan Van Jack I see what you've done there mate Racing Ryan Jack man of the match nothing else matters saw that coming a mile away but do I disagree? no fighters Blue Cat's the next one in and he writes in a few options today CJ Aribo and Bassi both excellent but it's got to be Sakala cause Dundee problems all day it's a good shout out there Murray Thompson writes in Aribo was unbelievable an unreal performance seemed to be everywhere at the pitch at once Mark writes in a few choices today for a change toss a coin between Sakala and Joe Aribo I think I'm going to see a lot of that if I'm honest with you Ian McDougall long time viewer of the channel what's happening Ian hope you're well big man he writes in Aribo man of the match all day long but BB again Again, has had a good game. Wish you were backing me up on Twitter when I was defending Barisic. Honestly, I got roasted. The right in. We look so much better now. That would have been a slog previously. We had 26 shots, 14 on target, and have capped it off like that. Lovely. On to Leon now. I'm a happy, happy, happy. Colin writes in. BB's defending since Geo has come in has been superb. Again, Colin, I wish you were online when I was taking the flack for saying that, big man. Joe, Alan, sorry, writes in, Joe Rebo has to be the man of the match. Alexander agrees with Aribo was outstanding. And the last one we'll read out in tonight's video because my phone is literally about to die <laughs> once again. I will stop it right here. And it comes in from the Daniel. And the Daniel writes in, Aribo all day long. Big man has been outstanding the last three. And tonight he was a right back on that pitch and shooting and finding space goes without saying, well, there it is. You've not only heard from me in tonight's video, you've heard from the people on Twitter, so if you haven't done so already, you know what to do by now, and as Rocky's having a little sponsor break, by the way, which may be coming off the, up on the mic, sorry, I'll wrap up today's video by saying a massive thank you for taking your time out to actually watch. Before I wrap up today's video, though, I just want to mention, obviously, it was my grand's funeral on Friday, and that's why there was no preview video on that, but uh, I was actually brought up after it and everything like that, when we were all sitting talking and everything like that. A lot of my actual family actually came up and mentioned the comment section and how positive that was, so I don't know if maybe one of them had watched the video maybe scroll down to right son because as you can imagine diehard Rangers fans and maybe they've spread it around the family how many positive and happy and nice uh, messages from you guys about my gran and all the lovely stuff you said about the family so I actually spread quite a lot ar around the family and that and more than one person came up and mentioned just how lovely the comments were and everything like that and how much you would appreciate it so before I wrap up today's video because I know social media and everything gets so much bad rep and this and so much negativity that Honestly, to me, meant a lot, people. I really, really did. Seeing that type of reaction and that was any positive vibes and everything like that. So from me and my family, thank you so much for all the support. Until the next video, ladies and gentlemen, take care of yourselves. All the best and bye.